How's it going and happy Monday everyone. Welcome back to Atalanta, welcome back to the conclusion of season number two. I left things, I was going to play one game off camera and come back for the final three games of the season. I played that one game, we lost that one game. Lasagna scored against me, yeah that's right, Kevin Lasagna, the man who I talked about at the start of this series, he's betrayed me and I just feel sad. Welcome back. So here we are, a triple header, theoretically, to end the season. We're going to be kicking things off with a game against Inter, a game which if they win, they will go tied on points with us. I've just realised, whilst our goal difference is better, I haven't actually checked the rules. What is the league sorting rules? It's results between teams. What happened last time we played Inter? I don't remember. We have the head-to-head -head over Milan. When did we play Inter? I can't remember. Inter? Okay, we beat them 3-2 away. So, as long as we don't lose by more than one goal today, even if they beat us, we'll still be above them. I really should have checked that before I started today's video. So, yeah, we've got Inter, which could end up being a bit of a title decider because of the results between teams thing, which I should have thought about. After that, we've got Lecce and Roma away to end the season. I really want to win the Serie A table. I really feel like we deserve to win Serie A this year. We've been at the top of the table for the vast majority of the season, but as we've talked about a fair bit, our form went through a rough patch. It recovered a little bit, but now two losses in a row makes things tough today. So this is actually a game in hand against Inter that's been pushed back repeatedly. Good news for us is we can just get straight into it today. No messing around. We're going to jump into this and see how we get on. Just looking at our team for today's game, it is a full strength team. I'm pleased to report players are, well, for the most part rested. We did play the game against Udinese at the weekend, but you can see here we are ready and raring to go. A win here. We're in a great position to have a nice chilled out end to the season. A defeat here, we might bottle Syria, and I really want to win it. Right, Inter are unbeaten in their last seven league games. They just beat us in a cup final a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to tell the players that I've got faith in them to end that run. I've got faith in you all. I'm going to double faith them. I believe in each and every one of our players. We've been so good. Um, the last couple of episodes haven't gone to plan. But look, we have a chance to end the season on a high, and they've got lots of tired players. I feel like Syria is winnable. If you're sat there thinking, wow, Jack, you've really rushed into today's match against Inter. I'm just quite anxious about it. I just want to get this game played. I just want to try and get the result at home that we need. And well, we might have a chance here. It's whipped in and Lucas at the back post. Goal number 22 of the season. That is not bad, is it? He is 22. He's not a spring chicken, really, Luca. But he's been a bit of a late bloomer for us. And, well, the ball was whipped in his way by Ravella. Playing as that Roman playmaker. Back post heads it downwards. Makes it 1-0. There is, however, immediately a kickoff highlight. Inter in the cup final were a pain in the butt. Even a draw here wouldn't be a terrible result. It would leave our fate completely in our own hands. However, we have got Roma to play on the last day of the season, and they're quite good. Marco, that's a big stop. But yeah, Roma, last game of the year. Ideally, we have the title wrapped up before that one. Five minutes left to the half. To Marco whipping it towards Romero, who headers it. Over the bar and in a half with not many chances. That was actually a pretty good one. There could be another chance here, but Raspadori not quite quick enough to get on that. What's his name? Anana. Okay, no, terrible. This is not the time for joking around, Jack. Gersens has the ball now to uh, Pasalic. Our former man, just as a little reminder. One man at the back post free. It's Correa and it's a tapping. What are we doing there? You could just see what was going to happen. It was so obvious from up here. Maybe on the pitch it wasn't quite as obvious. Correa left unmarked at the back post. And, well, it was it was very simple in the end. Who is that there? DeMarco, could you have got goal side? The defence is a complete shambles there. It's 1-1 after 43 minutes. We took the lead early. Haven't really built on that. And at half-time, in a, a game that's only had four shots on target between the two teams, it's 1-1. I'm going to tell the players it's not good enough. I'm not going to throw a water bottle. I did consider it, but I don't want to risk an injury to our players. Can you imagine if in Football Manager you could throw a water bottle and there was like a 10% chance it hits a player and injures them? Would that make you throw the water bottle less or more? I feel like I'd throw it more for the thrill of it. Anyway, they're on the attack here. This is not what we want to see. Ball whipped in towards Correa. Lutaro Martinez... Has just volleyed it in to make it 2-1. That's bad. That is, that is really bad. 
Um, who was that for us there who tr did some defending and then just kind of stopped doing the defending? Who was it? Name and shame. Was it Badia Shile? I mean, it's on his weaker right foot, but he just has to get more meaningful contact there. I can only assume he was worried about kicking it into his own goal. Into from, well, three shots on target, now four, have two goals. I'm going to move the wing-backs deeper, and I'm actually going to make, I was going to say some early changes. It's not really that early anymore. We're currently in the, the 56th minute, and this is a game that's calling out for Zach Kayan. Not been a good day at the office for Renato Sanchez. Elsewhere, Raspadori's been really, really poor. And you know what? I'm going to bring in Fabio Silva, a man who, when we've brought him on off the bench, has got goals for us. And I feel like this is a big occasion and a big moment where he's the man to make a difference. That said, we need to, well, maintain vigilant defensively. It kind of hurts to see the likes of Pasolic, our former man, playing for them and doing work. Also, Rafael, Rafael Toloi didn't play in the cup final. He's playing here today. There's three former players of ours in this Inter team, and they could be about to make it 3-1. They are. They go top of the league with that because we only beat them 3-2 away, and now they're beating us 3-1. And we get one goal back then the results between teams is tied and it goes to goal difference, which is in our favour. I mean, I've moved the wing-backs back and it's, it's not had the desired outcome. It's 3-1 less than two minutes after making that change. We have not created enough in this game, so I'm going to look for us to get a little more direct with our play, push the tempo up a little bit, still look to work the ball into the box, but I feel like we just need to be a little more, I guess... Direct, we need to get the ball into their half and get some shots away, is basically where I'm going. And whilst I could get rid of work ball into the box and we could just really start to lump it, I do want to attempt to play our brand of football. We have still got one sub left in our back pocket. As I said, I believe as things stand right now, in to go above us on the results between teams. So with that in mind, we need to get at least one goal back. We might as well push for one. Goal difference doesn't matter as much. Fabio Silva, that's why I've put him on the pitch. Take a bow. Goal number 10. Finesses it into the bottom corner. Did you see the curve on that, by the way? Did you see that? Forced an error out of them at the back. Rafael Toloi, our former man, our agent, our inside man, gives it away. Fabio Silva bends it into the bottom corner. It's now 3-2. And there's a kickoff highlight again. We've already had one of these. Can we stop with the kickoff highlights? They're not needed. Esposito for them. Options in the middle. Middle. Fabio Silva looking to push and press. Of course, Fabio Silva and Esposito, if I'm not mistaken, are they both on loan at and elect in real life? Playing against each other here, and now Barella's through. I thought that was in. I thought that was in. He skied it. I want to pause it here. We're the only game going on today. So as things stand, we are ahead of them because of their goal difference. Because the head-to-head -head is tied. But there is still time for goals. Sensi crosses it in. Rafael Toloi. It's our former player and he scored against us. The game is rigged. I don't care what anyone says. Football manager is scripted. I don't actually believe it's scripted. But, I mean, that's annoying, isn't it? Who was that on the post? Mailer. I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. I feel like he was to blame. And with that, Inter now go above us because of their head-to-head. -head. We need another goal. I don't know if away goals count on head-to-head. -head. I was about to do some changes. Now there's a free kick. If Sensi scores this, I might just go get a yogurt. I'm, go I'm going to go get a yogurt. Now I realise, I realise if you don't watch the live streams over on Twitch, which you absolutely should do, we're doing a save in Iceland at the moment, you don't understand why I've got a yogurt. This is my comfort food. When things go wrong, you know, some managers, they'll smoke on the sideline. I'm looking at you, Sari. I'm a man of culture. I eat yogurts. I know I'll be asked, what are you having, Jack? I'm having a Muller Light strawberry yogurt. Muller, if you want to sponsor the videos, have my people call your people. So here's the state of play. There's two games left of the season. We have Lecce, who are in the relegation zone, but are still fighting for safety. And we have Roma, who themselves are fighting for a Champions League spot. And depending on how things go, I've just realised we could finish outside the Champions League spots. That could still happen. As things stand, we're in second. We are going to need Inter to drop points between now and the end of the season. That's their last two games, though, are against Roma and Juventus. So I actually do feel like there might still be a chance. I didn't realise those were the last two games for them. You know what? Today's bad. I've got a yogurt, though, and I think things can be turned around yet. Cheers.
I love the fact that Mailer has leaked the fact I got angry. Not only did he stand on the post and let our former man score against us, he's now leaking to the press the fact that I got angry. Snake in the grass. Snake in the grass. Okay, we've got Lecce in for days. I'm going to join you guys for that one. We'll see you in a mo. I've just realised that Inter are playing Roma the day before we play. So as I mash continue here, we're going to come and see how they get on. Milan are also playing. So if they both win, we could be down in third to start our next game against Lecce. A game that should be straightforward. Inter of Roy at one, Rafael Taloya scored again. He scored two goals all season. They've been in the last two games to get them wins. Milan have drawn. Now, our head-to-head -head against Milan is better by seven goal difference because we beat them 7-0. Bad news for us. Inter are ahead of us going into the last day of the season. And uh, we are taking on the Roma team that they could only scrape a victory against. But, and I didn't realise this, those results you just saw do mean we've qualified for the Champions League. The board have set the budget, £30 million transfer budget, wage budget of £1.5 million. What are we currently spending on players? We're currently spending £1.34 million. So it's actually about £200,000 to spend. £30 million is quite nice too. I guess that's the advantage of Champions League money. And if we can keep getting that every year... We will actually, slowly but surely, actually get some money to spend. So that's exciting. What's less exciting is the fact that I know that this squad is going to get plucked apart in the summer. If I'm not careful, half the squad is just wanted. That's annoying. Okay, game two, Lecce. We have to win this to stand a chance of winning the league going into the final game of the season against Roma. Good news is we are guaranteed a Champions League spot, so big thumbs up for that. That was the main aim at the start of the season. But given how this season's gone, knowing that really we need Inter to slip up on the last day of the season to stand any chance, I, I mean, it sucks as just a feeling, a thing to know. I think we've been really good this year. What I would say is I feel like over the course of the season, the kind of fact that we are punching above our weight has become more and more obvious. The more games that we've had to play, you can see here there is just a general fatigue in our team that we're now having to deal with, just having played so many matches this year. And Renato Sanchez isn't going to be available today, so we're going to have a space on the bench. But I think the, the, the let's look at the positives. We've got a young squad. It's only going to get better. And the future looks bright, if nothing else. I'm just looking at other players here who are tired. I mean, you know what? Hatterbor... Pellegrini. I feel like this is a game we should win very comfortably. You know what? I'm going to rotate it even more. We have got a week after this game for the next match. We'll bring in Nagalo as well. I'm not sure if Nagalo's played in a live commentary yet. He has started 11 games this season as part of our rotation. We'll give him the nod elsewhere after his goal. I'm going to I'm going to bring in Fabio Silva. That goal that he scored last match was mad. He deserves another chance. And as I said, this is a game we should win. Let's share you in the relegation zone. Let's give ourselves some hope going into the last day. Nothing going on too early in this game, although maybe an opportunity for us here. Nagalo tries to pick out Hatterbor, overhits his pass in the end. Cleared away by Lecce, who, as I mentioned, they are in a relegation scrap. They're four points from safety with two games left. So they have to get, you'd imagine, a win here to stand any chance. And well, as the home team... I'm sure, I'm sure they have some belief that it would be possible, especially given our recent form. We have now lost two league games on the bounce to Inter and Udinese. The chance here for us maybe is we patiently knock the ball around at the back, as is our style of football, really. We love to just dominate the play, knock it around nicely like this, bait teams high up the pitch and then really exploit the wide areas with the wide centre-backs and also just the, the talent we have going forward. Darun plays it to Fabio Silva, holds it up nicely. Zach Hyen, one-on-one, scores it. Goal number seven for the 19-year-old. And Fabio Silva and Zach Hyen, two players we picked up, I think just over 20 million combined. They've been really standout this year. Of course, we've got Benjamin Sesco joining us in the summer. Maybe Fabio Silva will be a man to make way, but apparently... He wants to keep himself here because with the performances he's putting in, he's certainly given me some food for thought. It's a really nice goal. It makes it 1-0 and it allows me to relax slightly. Lecce in possession. Strefeza for them. Carrying a knock but also carrying the ball. Calabresi to Blin. Strefeza. They've got one or two options in the middle. Cisse tries to get his noggin on it. Can't do so, although Ivy might have a chance here in the wide area. Crosses it in and Asan Cisse has scored his third goal of the season. Third goal. Is he playing striker for them? I think their striker's just got his third goal of the season. Mm. 
We've, we've all experienced this in Football Manager, haven't we? Ivy plays it in, Cissé scores it. Could Marco have done better? Could the market have been better? I think it was all poor, to be fair. We could be in trouble again, though, because now they're launching the ball forward. Imagine if we can see two in two minutes. I don't want to imagine it, but I might have to. Strafeza bringing it forward. Why are they playing so confidently? I thought the early goal was going to kill their hopes, dreams, and aspirations, and instead, Lecce look up for it. And I don't like it. Gallo on the overlap. Options in the middle. Strafeza's there. He heads it just over, but that is a warning. Just to confirm, by the way, Cissé, who scored for them, it was his third goal for the season. He's played 17 games as a striker, and uh, he scored against us. I feel like over last episode, and maybe even the episode before on this one, I've been a bit... No, I don't want to use the word cynical, but I, I do feel a bit peed off. And I'm not really annoyed at the game. I'm not really annoyed at myself. I just feel like having overperformed, we did so well. And now I can just feel it all slipping away. And I don't know how to deal with it. But maybe, maybe it's not slipping away. Pellegrini has put us back in the lead here. Inside the first 30 minutes, I wanted a nice, calm 3 or 4 goal win. It doesn't feel like we're going to get that here against Lecce, Raspadori into the wide area, Pellegrini arriving late, cutting inside, and actually a really good finish. It's his first goal of the season, the left mid. Not a bad time to pick it up. So it's half-time here, 2-1 to the good. It's not quite gone as smoothly as I hoped it might. You can see here, they've not created a whole lot of opportunities, Lecce, but to be fair, we've not been very good either. And I'm going to let the players know that. We need to step up in this second half. As things stand, Lecce will be relegated with this result, so I'm expecting them to throw men forward as this game goes on. Really, the sooner we can get a second goal, the better, because that would make it well, a little harder for them to come back and maybe really open the floodgates for a few more. And well, maybe that's about to happen, because Hatterbar has now scored from out on the right-hand side. I think this is going to be checked by VAR. We've seen the left mid score. I think we've now just seen the right mid score. Maybe I shouldn't play with the wing-backs. Maybe the wing-backs are the problem. The build-up coming down this left-hand side, and then was it Scalvini who played the ball across, or was it Darun? It wasn't either. It was Froiler. Trick question. Hatterbor volleyed it. Keeper maybe should have done better. Not that I'm going to complain. This is one of those weird games where I've rested the team quite a lot by rotating, and as a result of that, I'm not really desperate to make a load of subs as we approach the half an hour mark. I feel like 60 minutes is where I look to make probably one or two changes, but I'm going to hold off for now. If we get a fourth, I might look to bring on a few of the backup centre-backs, maybe give Wisdom Ame some minutes. Froiler, Scalvini, to Romero. Romero, I think, is the most tired player on the pitch, so maybe the main candidate to be taken off. I'll tell you what, Romero charged forward there. It's a good job he got back into position quickly. And maybe we can make something happen here. Fabio Silva looks to pick out Raspadori. It's an overhit pass, but it's an underhit pass by their goalkeeper. He's giving it straight to Raspadori. Simple as you like. Not going to show the replay because it wasn't a spectacular goal. 4-1. And with that, we will now bring on Wisdom Ame. Recently played for the Italian under-21s team. He looks phenomenal. He's been improving a lot. We've been giving him minutes. He's going to get 28 minutes here to show us what he's all about. The sad thing here is we can inflate our goal difference, which is amazing, all we want. Plus 57 doesn't really matter because the league title is very, well, I was going to say it's very likely. It's almost certainly going to be settled on the head-to-head -head that we have with Inter if indeed we are going to stand a chance of winning it. And we can't change that. Oh my word, we could get another. Pellegrini just missed an open goal. He could have had a second in this game. Corner for Lecce. Dickman to take it. Whips in. Ivy. DeMarco. Darun gets it off the line. Ame, can he show us what he's all about? No. Wasn't inspired defending, but we are hopefully going to get it away from danger. I mean, the clean sheet's already gone, but I'd rather not concede a second. And the good news for us is we're going to weather that storm. They could still score it there. Have they just scored that they was is that is that offside i think it's offside lino var it's not offside it's countered so after all of that we did concede a second goal the ref should have blown his whistle 17 seconds ago it's a fix tight offside not given uh i mean like it doesn't matter we've won so a good win there the kind of win that we expect to get 4-2 in the end not the most convincing of score lines but we'll take it we now have a week until the final day of the season the bad news for AC Milan is they can no longer surpass us to win the league because of a head-to-head -head with us. Uh, I'm not sure what their head-to-head -head with Inter is, but it's irrelevant because of the plus seven goal difference. So with that in mind, one game left the season. We're taking on Roma away. Inter have Juventus away. Inter have been amazing this year. Juve, by comparison, have really struggled, but they could be playing for a shot at the top four. So they're desperately going to want to win. I'm not going to dilly-dally here. I'm going to join you in a week. 
So here we are, final day of the season. It all comes down to this. We are away from home against Roma. Inter are away against Juventus. A Juventus team who were predicted to win the league, they are down in sixth. They lost their midweek game. And as a result, they cannot get Champions League football this year. So they are going to be playing for pride and hopefully to help us secure the title. Elsewhere, Milan have Torino. I think there is a world where maybe both ourselves and Inter lose and then it goes to a three-way head-to-head tie. I don't know who that benefits, to be honest. I doubt that's going to happen, so let's not plan for it. Instead, let's just get straight into this, shall we? We are taking on Roma. I am so nervous for this game. The good news for us is we are at absolute full strength. Players have had a week of rest. I've realised there, Guiri is in the team. Guiri, get out of there. Luca. In you come. You can see here, Luca just continuing to get better and better and better. And if, you know, we win the league here, I will, I think, start to work work towards that mission that we talked about previously of try, trying to maybe make an entirely Italian team that can become the dominant force in Italy. I feel like that could be a really cool end goal with this save game. But make no mistake, we go into this against the odds. We are in second. The media prediction for the start this year was seventh place. We do not have a world-class squad. We don't have a great squad. You know, the updated season preview with kind of the updated odds here, you can see apparently we are fifth favourites of the league. We have the fifth best squad. I think Raspadori is the only player of ours in the media dream 11. We are not a team full of superstars. We are a young squad that over the course of this year has just consistently overperformed, at least in the league. We, we bottled a cup final and the Champions League we got demolished in. But we've got hope today. Just the small matter of Roma to beat. Anyway, you've seen the team here. We're not going to dilly-dally. We are going to get into this. Away from home against Roma, they are actually playing, I believe, for a Champions League spot. They are in fifth currently, but they could overtake Napoli. We could be crowned champions of a win today. Let's make it happen. Oh, and in case you haven't realised, I've activated the standing up desk. That's when you know it's a special occasion here at Work the Space headquarters. The standing up desk is here. I can, I can jump around. I can dance. I can cry. I can fall to my knees if need be. Hopefully that one won't be needed as well. We're going to be on the attack here. Mailer whipping it in. Luca back post free header. Scores it. Goal number 23 of the season. That is the dream start. Inside the first 15 minutes, we get our noses ahead. Just as a reminder, if Inter beat Juventus, doesn't matter what we do here. We just have to better Inter's results. That is, that is the kind of situation at play right now. I realise here we don't even need the league table, do we? We'll get the latest scores on, but not before another highlight kicks in. Mailer already has one assist. He could get another as we're building the play down his right-hand side. Ball played forward to Luca, who flicks it on to absolutely no one. Roma, by the way, centre-back partnership of Smaldini and Nathan Ake. I kind of rate that as a partnership. Also, Zaniolo for them is absolutely mad. I feel like in Football Manager. Zaniolo is the kind of player who, if we do decide to go out and build the full Italian team, he's the kind of player I'd love to have in our midfield. He is so good in this match engine. We've got to be wary of him. We've also got to be wary of Athena here, who's going to give it to Zaniolo, who hits it. And that, that's why he might be a good signing. Um, that is a mad goal. How has he scored from that right-hand side? I noticed going into the game, he was a little bit fatigued. Didn't notice he was fatigued there, did you? Oh my word. I mean, Afena brings it forward. Wearing the number 54 shirt. I don't know who Afena is, but they've got an assist. I mean, the finish there by Zaniolo is absolutely ridiculous. Right, we're going to pause the game. Let's get the latest scores on. We don't need to see our own formation. So, into Juve, still 0 0. Milan winning their game. You can see here how the league table looks if things stay as they are right now. We, uh, we would finish behind Inter on head to head. That game that we just played against them to start today really could come back to haunt us. Especially if we, this title is decided on that head-to-head. -head. We had a chance. We had it all in our own control and then we blew it all. They've got Janazai in their team. There's a throwback. He's over here. He's passed to Marco. Soleil, Sanchez. I thought for a second we were just going to give the ball away in a horrific area. As things stand though, Bania Chile, the wide centre-back. He's going on a Rome. Do you get it? Rome? Because we're playing Rome. Renato Sanchez. You know what? He deserved to miss that because I just did a stupid pun. AC Milan are now 2-0 up in their game. I'm still not sure if they can win the league if both ourselves and Inter lose. But as things stand, neither of us are losing. So I guess that's kind of irrelevant. 
Roma bringing the ball forward, launched forward, but dealt with by Badia Schille. Milana now 3 0 up in their game, by the way. Luca looked offside there. He's not going to finish it anyway. Now Roma poofing the ball forward to a Fenner to run onto. I mean, we will take those all day, every day. I feel like Romero has got the aerial prowess to win everything that's played forward like that. As we have a chance here. Renato Sanchez, difficult angle, but not difficult enough for him to score. Melo with another assist. Goal number 10 of the season for Renato Sanchez. We reinstate our lead. 10 minutes left of the first half. We've looked, perhaps, I think, the better team in this game. Just looking at the stats, you can see here, despite being the away team, having 57% of the ball. We've taken the chances that have come our way. Keeper's positioning may be questionable by Patricio. Do I care? No. Now, I don't want to get carried away. As things stand, we are top of the league because Inter are still nil-nil, I think, with Juventus. <sighs> Remain calm, everyone. Remain blooming calm. Ball played for to Luca. Nods it down to Raspadori. Luca back on the inside, potentially, although Smalling's there to deal with it. And now Roma maybe, maybe going to make something happen here. Zaniolo wandering in the wide areas. I'm scared of him. He's scary. Not got a lot of support, but gives it instead to Selic. Krinic now with it to Vertu. Pellegrini tackled by Pessina. What a tackle that was from behind. Raspadori now bringing the ball forward. Vertu sticks in a tackle. I'll tell you what, there's a war going on in this midfield at the moment. Blow for blow, battle for battle, but we've come away with it. Luca hammers it home. He makes it 3-1. We're checking VAR. I, was, I wasn't paying attention. Is this going to count? I thought he was onside. I didn't even really consider the fact he could be offside. I got carried away in the moment and I shouldn't have done it. It's offside. It's still 2-1. It would have been goal number 24 of the season. I mean, I, mm, it, it's, he probably is offside, but it's unfortunate. Okay, half time here. We are winning 2-1. I'm pleased. We've created loads. We've been the better team. We don't need to overcomplicate things here. Elsewhere, why, why is the Juve game not showing in my latest scores? Got dodgy 3G in the stadium. The tablet isn't updating with all the latest scores. Janazai, cutting inside for Roma. Options inside. Athena falls back to Janazai. Zaniolo's there. Badia Schille gets it away from danger, my son. Raspadori tries to play it forward. Lucha, or Luca. It's not a cha, it's a ka. He's not getting there, is he? He's, he's got 13 pace and 12 acceleration. He, he's not that guy <laughs> to launch the ball forward towards. Zaniolo does a little bit of a dance. Plays it inside to Selic. Zaniolo now with it. Floats it forward. Janazai back post. Free. Scores. Makes it 2-2. Six minutes into the second half. It is back all square here. And I think there hasn't been a goal in the other game. I don't know. The tablet's not updating. If we're drawing an intra drawing, we are no longer top. Zaniolo with the assist. Switches it over to Janazai. He takes it down. Marco beaten at the near post. I know they say goalkeepers should never get beaten at their near post. I always feel like that's not really true. I don't know if that's his fault or not. It doesn't really matter. We can't blame him. Badia Chile heads over. That was a chance as well. I'll tell you what, it's not been a calm start to this second half. An hour played here. I'm going to make changes. It is still nil-nil in the Zebra v Inter game. I didn't pause the game. I hit the pause button. There's another highlight starting. I guess we'll unpause and see what happens. We've given away the ball. I thought I'd paused it and I was going to make some tactical changes, but instead we are here. Mailer to Renato Sanchez. Plays it forward towards Luca. Might have to go on his own. Can he go on his own? No, Patricio makes a really, really big stop. With that, I am going to pause the game. I'm going to click it rather than just hitting my mouse button that is meant to pause it. raspadori has been poor today. I'm bringing in Guiri. Elsewhere, Pessina has been disappointing. Let's get in Zach Kayan. Move Renato Sanchez to box-to-box -box midfielder. 23 minutes left in this game. We are probably going to need a goal unless Inter can do us a favour and win. But it's still nil-nil in their game. And Inter... Wait, Inter are losing. Kulisevsky's just scored. Pulls the game. We're top of the league. There's eight minutes left. And we're top. Do I go... Do I... Do I, do I just try and shut this down now? No, there's... You know what? Bring the wingbacks back. That's fine. Uh, Guiri, go to pressing forward. Just, you know, apply pressure at the back. In possession. Lower the tempo. Up the time wasting. Let's just try and kill off this. There's a highlight immediately. Why did I change anything? Janazai whips it in back post. It's cleared away, but only as far as the two. Why did I change anything? Why did I go more defensive? I still want us to play positive and kind of control possession. El Shireri volleys it. I think he's offside. Please be offside. 
The AR is going to have a look. It'd be very anticlimactic, wouldn't it, if we draw to win the league here? It has been disallowed. Okay, we have had a favour done to us by, well, I was going to say by VAR. Really, it was by El Shereri being stood offside. It wasn't even close. Five minutes left in this game. Um, I'm going to go to defensive. I'm going to do it. You, you can't stop me. I'm going to shout demand more. Go defensive. There's three minutes left. It's still 1-0. To Juve, there's four minutes of added time. They've got a corner. There's three minutes left. Romero heads it away from danger. We are holding on here. Janazai to Debeau. He's hit the crossbar for Roma and it goes over. It's still 2-2. Have we done it? Have we done it? It's 2-2. Now, the, the trophy lift is bugged this year in Football Manager. It doesn't play since the winter update when you win the league. So we're just going to hit continue here and wait for the league table to appear where I'll do a little hop. I'll do a little jig. Kulazewski has scored for Juve. And with that, we have won Syria on the final day. Three teams separated by one point. That was, that was far too stressful. That was, that was unnecessary, wasn't it? Let's be real. That was, that was awful. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that is the first Serie A title in uh, Atalanta history. Indeed, it is. 2023, get it, get, uh, get a bet in. Put it in right now for in two seasons' time. Atalanta are going to win Serie A if, if they copy me exactly. What a moment. That is unbelievable. Pre-season odds of 10 to 1. We were not the favourites to do that. We weren't even favourites to finish in the top four. But a young team has massively overperformed... Roma, with a draw, by the way, could not get Champions League football, although apparently they have got Champions How have they got Champions League football? How can everyone have Champions League football? What's happened here? I'm so confused. It doesn't matter. We've got £20 million to win in the league. The players are taking £6 million of it. I assume I, as an individual, get the other £14 million. Tullio Gritti, our assistant manager, is a happy camper. Can you blame him? Now, I do appreciate with this kind of save game, people might look at it and go, Jack, you've won the league... What's, what's left for you to do? Well, obviously, I want to win the Champions League, and we did discuss it previously. I really like the idea of trying to get as many players into our team like who are Italian as possible. Basically, build a team that is entirely Italian and try and become the best team in Europe. Now, maybe we'll keep a few of our more favourite younger players around um, as part of that, but I do really like the idea of just going with this all-out Italian identity and as much as we've won Serie A this year, it wasn't actually that convincing in the end. We won it by one point. Last year, 84 points would have only got you third. It was a weird year this year with the World Cup and stuff, which I do feel like we benefited from. Obviously, a lot of other teams had players away on international duty. Our team, by comparison, didn't really have that. And so to retain the title in itself is going to be a challenge. And we've kind of got to prove that it's not a fluke, I feel like, as much as anything. It's always really nice to win in Football Manager and do well. I think it's really nice to do well when you're playing something very different, like this tactic we've got here. This 3-5-2 has been so fun to watch this year. We've created some really nice goals. I wonder if we could do some more stuff with it to tweak it a little bit more. If you've got any ideas for how you would approach things differently with a squad that we've got, I'd be kind of curious to know people's thoughts down in the comments. I feel like we've done something really cool with wide centre-backs. Maybe for next year, we look to do something slightly different. I don't know. Answers on a postcard. Anyway, to wrap up today, we are going to go and do the end of season review. Don't worry, there's a transfer special coming your way tomorrow. Don't fret, that's happening still. And just as a reminder, we were in the Champions League. We've been given £30 million to spend, so we are going to just make it rain or something. I have a pile of fake money somewhere. Should we make it rain? little bit of behind the curtain stuff here i've just spent 15 minutes looking for some fake money and i don't have it anymore so i can't even make it rain i feel sad i think it was an episode of park to primaria where we did that maybe someone can find the episode number where that happened it's like a distant memory anyway as i said we've got the end of season review what an incredible season winning syria our first bit of silverware as Atalanta manager might be our only bit why is why is nothing loaded here football manager are you are you okay Okay, it's loaded up when I go forward and backwards. Biggest win, 7-0 against Monaco. That was fun. Match to remember, 4-1 against Lazio. Is it bad that I don't really remember that game? It was before the World Cup happened. It's been a weird, long season. Goal of the season was Gueri against Torino. Shall we give it a watch? I might be wrong. I kind of wish there was a way I could just click a watch the goal of the season button on that screen rather than having to find the match that we scored in like this. 
How did Guiri score it? I don't really remember this. I don't feel like it was that special. Was that goal of the season worthy? I feel like we've seen better goals scored today than that one. Weird. In terms of the club's reputation, we still only have continental rep. We're not a worldwide club. We're still not a super club. I feel like we're not going to be able to attract all the players in the world simply off winning Syria, unfortunately. But what you can see here is competition prize money has rocketed up this year. Obviously, we won the league, but also just making it to the Champions League makes a massive difference in that regard. In terms of shirts sold, Raspadori up there, Renato Sanchez, Zach Hayen, Pessina and Luca, the top five selling shirts. And in terms of the team that we lined up with this year, I mean, look at this team. Raspadori with 41 goals, Luca with 23, DeMarco getting 10, Renato Sanchez getting 10, and a whole host of players getting double figures for assists. And I don't know about anyone else, I just see all these green average ratings and they make me happy. The back three, all of our centre-backs getting above a 7.5 rating, and DeMarco, 7.85. For a man who's played left mid this year, six player of the matches, six goals, eight assists, only 25 games played. He didn't play in 13 of our league games. He's been nuts this year. I am also going to give myself a pat on the back. Manager of the year. Good job, Jack. Look at that headband. Look at that hair. One day I'll be able to grow my hair like that. Probably just better to buy a wig, though, that looks like that, maybe. I'm not sure if you can get... Can you get Sideshow Bob wigs? Answers on a postcard. Fans player of the season was DeMarco. Young player of the season went to Soleil. Signing of the season went to Luca. I think that's a fair assessment. 19 goals scored in 21 starts and five appearances on off the bench. His goals are instrumental to our, us this year. He was the player that I thought Guiri was going to be. Guiri first season was amazing. This year, he was disappointing. And then he kind of just fell into the shadow of Luca as the season went on and this man, I mean, the fans already love him. He's been here one season. I think I love him too. Raspadori dominating some record breakers here. 29 league goals, 41 goals in all competitions, four goals scored in a match, 19 assists for Mela. That's a pretty impressive turnout from the guy out on the right-hand side. 15 of those coming in the league, by the way. And it's not like he's on set pieces either. Most of those from open play. Romero, worst discipline. He didn't get a red card this year. He did get a 14 yellows, though. He loves the colour yellow, does Romero. So as we already discussed, that league finish is a record high. And when you look at the previous years of finishing third repeatedly, it's quite refreshing to see a first there. A monumental achievement, uh, way above what I expected from this team. I feel like next year is going to be difficult. As I said, we've been beneficiaries of a World Cup, which helps out teams that maybe don't have a load of players going on international duty. Essentially, we get a nice rest period for all our players in the middle of the season. I feel like it's going to be a pretty monumental challenge to defend our throne next year. And I suppose that's indicated by the fact that the board expectation for next year is to qualify for the Europa League. They're not ambitious, are they? Raspadori named Italian Serie A Player of the Year. 29 goals in 31. Did he get the golden boot in the end over Immobile? No. Immobile got 38 goals in, in a 38-game season. Martinez got 30 goals, but neither of them as good as Raspadori. I'm not quite sure how Raspadori has got that award. I'm not going to complain, though. Look at this man's development over the last two years. He has done absolutely amazing. And, I mean, let's be honest, he is kind of the reason we've done as well as we have this year. Having seen Bayern show interest in him in January, despite the fact he is signing a new contract to become the highest earner at the club, I have a sneaking suspicion there's going to be some interest in him this summer that we're going to have to deal with. In terms of the team of the year, we actually have a whole load of players in this, which is cool to see. Marco in goal got in the goalkeeper slot, despite the fact my nan won goalkeeper of the year. I don't know. How does that work in the voting? Is it different people voting? Answers on a postcard, if you know. Romero and Badia Chile in at centre-back. Ravella got the defensive midfielder kind of position in the team of the year. Alongside Zach Hayen and Renato Sanchez. Mela out on the right. And Raspadori, who won player of the season in the league, doesn't, doesn't get in the, the media dream 11. I don't... This, th these awards seem stupid and pointless. Does anyone else agree? And you know what? I think that wraps up a pretty epic season tour here at Atalanta. I'll be honest, I didn't expect to have success like this as early as we have, but I do feel like next year is going to be a challenge still. We've got a great young set of players. I am really leaning towards this idea of trying to get in as many Italian players as possible, maybe try and get an entirely Italian squad kind of in five years' time that can win everything. I feel like that would be a really, really cool achievement if it can be done. 
Obviously, the fact I've just signed Benjamin Sesco and a load of non-Italian players might make that a little bit tricky. But the where there's a will, there's a way, I think. I feel like it might be the most unconvincing title win ever. I don't care, though. We are Serie A champions. Tomorrow, we have a transfer special. I still want to win the Champions League. I've never won the Champions League with an Italian club that I've managed in Football Manager. I never did it with Monopoly when we streamed that save game on Twitch two years ago. I want to do it here with Atalanta. And that, I think, is what we're going to be working towards. If you have enjoyed today's video, as always, do drop a like on it. I'll see you tomorrow for more. And until then, it is me, Jack, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.